Tuberculosis, or TB, is caused by a bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis, or M. tuberculosis. Not everyone infected with TB bacteria becomes sick. As a result, two TB-related conditions exist, latent TB infection, or LTBI, and TB disease. It is estimated that up to 13 million people in the United States have LTBI. People with LTBI are infected with M. tuberculosis, but they do not yet have evidence of TB disease. People with LTBI do not have signs and symptoms of TB disease, and they cannot spread M. tuberculosis to others. While not everyone with LTBI will develop TB disease, about 5 to 10 percent of infected people will develop TB disease over their lifetimes if not treated for LTBI. Testing for TB infection should be a routine and integral part of healthcare for patients with increased risk for TB. Some people have a higher risk of getting infected with TB. People who have contact with someone who has infectious TB disease. People who were born in or who frequently travel to countries where TB disease is common, including Mexico, the Philippines, Vietnam, India, China, Haiti, Guatemala, and other countries with high rates of TB. And certain healthcare workers and others who work or live in places at high risk for TB transmission, such as homeless shelters, jails, and nursing homes. The priorities for targeted testing of populations at high risk for TB should be based on local epidemiologic data. In addition, all U.S. healthcare personnel should be screened for TB including a TB test upon hire. The two kinds of tests that are used to detect TB bacteria in the body are the TB skin test, or TST, and TB blood test. A blood test is the preferred option because it can be done in one visit and is the most accurate if patients have been vaccinated for TB in the past. Factors in selecting which test to use include the reason for testing, test availability, and cost. Generally, it is not recommended to test a person with both a TB skin test and a TB blood test. Healthcare providers are encouraged to use TB blood tests to screen for TB infection whenever possible. A positive TB skin test or TB blood test only tells that a person has been infected with TB bacteria. It does not tell whether the person has LTBI or has progressed to TB disease. Other tests, such as a chest X-ray and a sample of sputum, are needed to see whether the person has TB disease. As a healthcare worker, you play an important role in TB prevention and control. Your knowledge and skills are valuable in accurately identifying people who have TB infection. This video will demonstrate how to test for TB infection by administering and reading the MEN2 tuberculin skin test. Since the 1930s, the Mantu tuberculin skin test has been used to detect LTBI. The Mantu tuberculin skin test is administered by a trained healthcare provider who injects a small amount of testing fluid, called tuberculin, or purified protein derivative, into the skin on the lower part of the arm. After two to three days, the skin test reaction is then examined by the healthcare provider who measures any swelling not redness, where the tuberculin was injected. The measurement is used to determine if the reaction to the test is positive or negative. For the purposes of this training video, only the Mantu tuberculin skin test will be discussed. The two main parts include administering and reading the skin test. This part of the procedure includes preparation steps, injection steps, and final steps. The preparation steps include collecting supplies, providing patient education, washing your hands, locating and cleaning the injection site, and preparing the syringe. When preparing to administer the Mantu tuberculin skin test, make sure that the area for administering the test has a firm, well-lit surface and that equipment and supplies are ready. 
Supplies should include a vial of tuberculin, a single-dose disposable tuberculin syringe, a ruler with millimeter measurements, 2x2 two two gauze pads or cotton balls, alcohol swabs, a Sharps disposal container, record-keeping forms for the patient and provider, and a pen. Tubersol and Aplisol are the two commercially available tuberculin products. The multi-dose vials contain tuberculin for either 10 or 50 tests. The tuberculin is administered using a single-dose disposable tuberculin syringe that has a 1 quarter to 1 half inch 27 gauge needle with a short bevel. In the United States, the Mentu tuberculin skin test consists of an intradermal injection of exactly one tenth of a milliliter, which contains five tuberculin units. Syringe and needle technologies continue to evolve to help prevent needle stick injuries. Institutional policy should determine which skin test device has been evaluated and approved for use by your facility. Look at the vial label to make sure the vial contains the tuberculin that you want to use, including the tuberculin unit strength. The label should indicate the expiration date. If it's been open more than 30 days or the expiration date has passed, the vial should be thrown away and a new vial used. When you open a new vial, write the date and your initials on the label to indicate when the vial was opened and who opened it. To avoid reducing the potency of the tuberculin, store it inside a refrigerator so that it remains between 35 to 46 degrees Fahrenheit or between 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. Store and transport the tuberculin in the dark as much as possible and avoid exposure to light. In certain settings, such as when you're in the field, you may need to use another type of cooling container to control the temperature and protect from light. After collecting supplies, the next step is patient education. You should sit so that you are both comfortable and facing each other. Discuss why the skin test is being given, what is involved in the procedure, and when the patient should return for the test to be read. Explain that 48 to 72 hours after the test is administered, the patient must return to have the end duration measured and evaluated. Make an appointment for the patient to return. If a patient can't return within the 48 to 72 hour time period, do not administer the test. The test result will not be valid after 72 hours. Instead, schedule another time that allows the patient to come for both the test and the return appointment. It's important to encourage the patient to ask questions they may have about the test. Also, consult local practice to find out how best to document informed consent in your setting. After providing patient education, you should wash your hands using an appropriate hand washing technique before administering the test or any other procedure involving patient contact. In certain field settings, it may be necessary to use other hand hygiene techniques. Always follow your institution's standard precautions for infection control. On a firm, well-lit surface, expose the patient's arm and slightly flex it at the elbow. The injection should be placed on the palm side up surface of the forearm about two to four inches below the elbow. Your local institutional policy may specify the right or left forearm for the skin test. The area selected should be free of any barriers to placing and reading the skin test, such as muscle margins, heavy hair, veins, sores, or scars. If the patient has any of these at the site, then you should use the other arm or the standard alternative site selected by your institution. After choosing the injection site, clean the area with an alcohol swab by circling from the center of the site outward. Allow the site to dry completely before the injection. Wipe the top of the vial with a new alcohol swab before drying up the tuberculin solution. Pick up the syringe. Be sure to fasten the needle tightly on the syringe by holding the cap and twisting it onto the tip of the syringe. Next. Remove the needle cap. The needle bevel should be perpendicular to the flange of the syringe. If necessary, turn and tighten the needle to line up the bevel correctly with the flange. Place the vial on a flat surface, hold the vial between the thumb and fingers, and insert the needle through the neoprene stopper. 
Invert the vial while keeping a firm hold on the syringe and plunger. The tip of the needle should be below the fluid level in the vial. Pull back on the plunger and draw out slightly more than one-tenth of a milliliter needed for the test. Remove the needle from the vial. Hold the syringe in an upright position, then draw back slightly on the plunger. Tap the syringe lightly to break up air bubbles, then push forward. Expel all air and excess fluid from the syringe and needle, leaving exactly one-tenth of a milliliter of tuberculin solution in the syringe. Because some of the tuberculin solution can adhere to the inside of the plastic syringe, the skin test should be given as soon as possible after the syringe is filled. The second step in administering the Mantu tuberculin skin test is injection. You'll inject the tuberculin, discard the needle and syringe, check that the skin test was administered properly, and repeat the test if needed. Stretch taut the selected area of skin between the thumb and forefinger. This provides a surface that is easier for the needle to penetrate. With the needle bevel facing up and the flange of the syringe parallel to the forearm, hold the syringe between your thumb and forefinger. The Mantu tuberculin skin test is an intradermal injection. With the needle bevel against the patient's skin, insert it slowly at a 5 to 15 degree angle. The 5 to 15 degree angle is very important because this layer of skin is very thin. For an intradermal injection, the needle bevel is advanced approximately three millimeters through the epidermis, the superficial layer of skin, so that the entire bevel is covered and lies just under the skin. The injection will produce inadequate results if the needle angle is too deep or too shallow. When the needle is inserted at the correct angle, you can see the bevel of the needle just below the skin surface. Next, release the stretch skin and hold the syringe in place on the forearm. Grip the flange of the syringe between your first and middle fingers. Use your thumb to press on the plunger. Now, slowly inject the tuberculin solution. Remove the needle without pressing or massaging the area. You should feel fairly firm resistance as the tuberculin enters the skin. A tense, pale wheel that's 6 to 10 millimeters in diameter appears over the needle bevel. If you're using a safety needle, engage the safety needle mechanism before discarding. Next, discard the used syringe immediately in the designated sharps container. To prevent needle stick injuries, used needles should not be recapped, purposely bent or broken, removed from disposable syringes, or otherwise manipulated by hand. It's not unusual for a drop of blood to appear at the injection site, even when the needle is inserted properly. Should this happen, lightly blot the blood away with a 2x2 two two gauze pad or cotton ball. Do not cover the site with an adhesive bandage because the adhesive could cause irritation and interfere with the test. Properly dispose of the contaminated gauze pad. To determine if the skin test was administered properly, Use the millimeter ruler to immediately measure the wheel at its maximum size. The wheel should be at least six millimeters in diameter. If the wheel is less than six millimeters in diameter, then the test should be administered again in a different location. The needle bevel may have been inserted too deeply or an inadequate dose administered. If leakage occurs at the insertion site, the needle bevel may not have been inserted far enough for the bevel to be covered by the skin. If the tuberculin test must be repeated, use another site at least 2 inches or 50 millimeters away from the original site. Or use the standard alternate placement site. You will need to indicate this alternate site when you fill out the record-keeping forms. The final steps in administering the Mantu tuberculin skin test includes immediately and thoroughly washing your hands, recording information, reminding the patient about the return visit, providing patient education, and returning the vial to the refrigerator. Be sure to record information on the patient's chart and other record-keeping forms. Write the date and time the test was administered, the name and manufacturer of the injected solution, the lot number, the tuberculin dose administered, the expiration date, the forearm or alternative site in which the injection was given, the site location if you repeat the test, the name of the person who administered the test, 
and the reason for giving the skin test. Since it's important for the patient to return within 48 to 72 hours to have the test result read, always remind the patient to return. Giving the patient a card with information on the care of the site and the date for the return appointment may help serve as a reminder. Explain that mild itching, swelling, or irritation may occur and that these are normal reactions that do not require any treatment. These types of reactions usually go away within a week. Explain how to care for the injection site after the test. Tell the patient to keep the site clean and dry and avoid scratching the site or applying adhesive bandages, creams, or lotions. Also mention that getting the site wet with water is not harmful, but the site should not be wiped or scrubbed. Finally, return the tuberculin vial to the refrigerator or other cooling container if you're in the field. In review, remember that when you administer the MEN2 tuberculin skin test, the preparation steps include collecting the supplies, providing patient education, washing your hands, locating and cleaning the injection site, and preparing the syringe. The injection steps include injecting the tuberculin at a 5 to 15 degree angle, discarding the needle and syringe properly, checking that the skin test was administered properly, and repeating the test if needed. The final steps include washing your hands, recording the information, reminding the patient about the return visit, providing patient education, and returning the vial to the refrigerator. The last part of the procedure is to read the MEN2 tuberculin skin test. The method demonstrated in this video is based on the palpation method. The steps include collecting supplies, inspecting the site, palpating, marking, and measuring the induration, and recording the measurement. There are several different methods for reading the MEN2 tuberculin skin test, and they can vary among facilities. For each facility, Everyone reading the skin test should receive training in and use the same method. A great deal of practice is required to achieve consistently reliable measurements. The test should be read between 48 and 72 hours after the skin test has been administered. A patient who doesn't return within 72 hours will need to be rescheduled for another skin test. To begin, collect the following supplies. A small plastic flexible ruler marked in millimeters to measure the test, a pen to mark the edges of the induration, and an alcohol pad to clean off the pen marks. You'll need the patient's record or other appropriate forms for documenting the measurement results. It is important to have easy to understand patient education materials available in various languages. This will reinforce important information, help answer questions, and provide instructions on follow-up evaluation. To locate the skin test site, Inspect the arm in good light and on a firm surface. Turn the arm palm up, support it, and slightly flex it at the elbow. Sometimes the site has erythema, a reddening of the skin that can also have swelling. The erythema should not be measured. Whatever induration is present at 48 to 72 hours should be measured and recorded. Only the part of the reaction that can be felt, which is the induration, is measured even if there is soft swelling or redness at the site. Keep in mind there might not be an induration. Reactions to the tuberculin test at the injection site can range from no induration to a large, well-defined induration. In order to feel the induration properly, keep your fingernails short enough so that they don't protrude beyond the finger. The induration is not always visible. Sometimes you must rely on palpation with your fingertips to discover if there's induration at the site. With your fingers together, touch the area lightly with the pads of your fingertips. Using a light, gentle motion, sweep the fingertips over the surface of the forearm in a two-inch diameter in all four directions to locate the margins or edges of induration. If induration is present, use a zigzag, feather-like touch over the area to outline the margins of induration. Determining margins all around the induration helps to find the edges, which will be measured later. 
When palpating for margins, be careful not to confuse a margin of induration with a margin of muscle on the forearm. To check this, raise the patient's arm to a 45 degree angle and palpate again. You should still be able to palpate the margins of induration. The diameter of the induration is measured across the forearm from the thumb side of the arm to the little finger side of the arm or vice versa, for example, parallel to a watch band. To mark the edges of the induration, hold your palm over the injection site with your fingertips at the outer edge of the patient's forearm. Without lifting, move the fingertips from the outer edge of the forearm towards the induration. Rest one fingertip firmly against the induration border on one side before marking the margin. The fingertip should remain in contact with the skin at all times. Mark lightly with a fine dot at the widest edge of the induration using the fingertip as a guide. Repeat the procedure from the other side of the patient's forearm and place the second mark on the margin of induration. Palpate again to double check that the induration was marked correctly. If the margin is not equally clear all the way around the induration, it's still necessary to mark the margins on each side of the induration. Palpate around the induration from the easily felt margin to the not so easily felt margin. If the margins of induration are irregular, mark and measure the longest diameter across the forearm. To measure the diameter of the induration, use the millimeter ruler. Place the zero ruler line inside the left dot edge and read the ruler line inside the right dot edge. If the measurement falls between two divisions on the millimeter scale, record the lower mark. The induration shown here measures 10 millimeters. Reactions to the skin test will vary. For example, this is a very large reaction with blistering, swelling, and redness. Make sure to record blistering even if no induration is present. Palpate this induration gently, as it may be painful. Measure only the induration. This reaction measures 17 millimeters. There is redness and swelling in this reaction, but there is no induration. Because only the margins of induration are significant, the redness and swelling should not be mistakenly measured. Therefore, the measurement of this induration is zero millimeters. Immediately after the test is measured, write the exact measurement in millimeters of induration on the patient's record. Do not simply record the interpretation of the results as negative or positive, and do not record the results in centimeters. For example, an induration that measures 3 millimeters should be recorded as 3 millimeters and not as negative. Additional information should include the date and time the test was read, the name and signature of the person who read the skin test, and the presence or absence of adverse effects. State or local policies may require additional documentation of adverse effects. Accurately reading and recording skin test measurement results is important and gives the healthcare provider useful information for evaluation. Results are often used as a baseline or as a comparison with past or future test results. Interpretation should be performed by a trained healthcare provider in accordance with institutional policies based on CDC guidelines. Check your institution's policy for evaluation and referral procedures. Positive TST. This means the person's body was infected with TB bacteria. Additional tests are needed to determine if the person has latent TB infection or TB disease. A healthcare worker will then provide treatment as needed. Negative TST. This means the person's body did not react to the test and that latent TB infection or TB disease is not likely. If a person is found to be infected with TB bacteria, other tests are needed to see if the person has TB disease. TB disease can be diagnosed by medical history, physical examination, chest x-ray, and other laboratory tests. TB disease is treated by taking several drugs as recommended by a healthcare provider. If a person does not have TB disease, but has TB bacteria in the body, then LTBI is diagnosed. Progression from untreated LTBI to TB disease accounts for approximately 80% of U.S. TB cases. Identifying and treating people with LTBI 
is essential for controlling and eliminating TB disease in the U.S. LTBI treatment is effective for preventing TB disease. Primary care providers play a key role in achieving the goal of TB elimination because of their access to populations at high risk for TB. Reliable reading of the tuberculin skin test requires a great deal of practice and adherence to appropriate steps for quality control. The steps in this method include standardization of procedures, training, supervision, and practice. This may include periodic standardized reliability testing. In review, remember, when you read the Mantu tuberculin skin test, you should collect the appropriate supplies, inspect the site, palpate the induration, mark the induration, measure the induration, not the erythema, and record the measurement. Although it takes practice to perform the Mantu skin test accurately and reliably, the skills and knowledge you develop in administering and reading the Mantu tuberculin skin test will help you play an important role in TB prevention and control. Thank you for taking the time to watch this training. For more information on TB testing, visit cdc.gov/tb.